Hi, Daisy. <laughs> Hi, Daisy. So Daisy is one of our delegates for the Miss Asian Global and Miss Asian America pageant for 2020. So we're super thrilled and excited to have you here today. Thank you for spending the time and getting to know me. Appreciate it. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. So Daisy, just so we can get to know you a little better, what motivates you to do what you do every day? And what's like the driving factor that you're like super passionate about? Overall, what gets me excited is my excitement for life. I'm a very goal-oriented person. I like to do a lot of things, a lot of things in life interest me. And so because of that, it's very important for me to try and manage to make the best use of every day. I get up, I'm excited about work. I work in sales. Um, I talk to people all day and I really love what I do. I also like to work out, talk to friends, learn something new. So it helps me really focus on time managing, by being excited by so many things. It sounds like you're able to balance out your life very well because you have your work side and then you have your hobby side and you're also staying in shape too. So just curious, like what are some of the workouts that you do and like how do you stay in shape? Yeah, so there's a YouTuber called Vlogilates. Have you heard of her? No, I haven't. But is it like Pilates sort of? <laughs> yes, it's, it's yeah. Pilates. Essentially it's Pilates in a video. I just discovered her recently, but she's really awesome. You could pretty much do any workout at home, especially what's happening today with COVID. I think it's important to make sure you get your workout in. So that's what I enjoy the most. Daisy, if you could describe a time when you felt like it was very challenging for you, can you describe that experience and how you were able to get through that problem? I say about two years ago when I moved to Los Angeles. I was living at New York at the time and I moved to Los Angeles for work. We were opening up a new office and I wanted to be a part of that and really kick things off. I didn't know what to expect. I'm a very social person. I love people, I love things, I love activity. And that's how my life in New York was. And prior to that, I was in San Francisco, both very lively. And when I got to LA, it's lively, but because everything is so spread out in Los Angeles, it takes a lot of time to go somewhere, see someone. And I didn't have a car at that time, so I was taking the bus. I didn't really understand how LA worked. My company, it was still the same company, but when I was working in New York, it was uh, 400 plus people, it was headquarters and always around people, and very proactive. In Los Angeles, because we were starting a new office, it was about five of us. It was gearing towards a work from home culture. So both my social, my work life, and just how I operate day to day was drastically different. During this time, I actually gave myself self-diagnosed depression. I self-diagnosed because I realized I wasn't excited getting out of bed. I was feeling feelings where I didn't understand what that really felt. And so long story short, I didn't realize this self-diagnosed depression until after the fact when I realized that wasn't who I was. And through this experience, I learned so much about myself. I learned, I learned how to be alone. I learned that I am a social person. I like people. I like energy. And I also learned to adapt. Like if I don't have that, how else can I be happy? How else can I really make an impact? And I started doing things like reading more, learning more, and just getting back to who I was and someone who liked to do a lot of that. How did you actually deal with that situation of being alone and what helped you get out of that situation? It does have to come with a mental change of understanding that you own and you decide what kind of life you live. No one makes you feel crappy about yourself. No one makes you feel any certain way but yourself. So by one, talking to friends and understanding, feeling that familiarity again, two, just having the mental awareness and knowing like this is what's created based on myself. Three, enabled me to understand and learn and just go back to things that makes me happy. Like meeting new people, making friends, finding a way to socialize at work, even though it was a more of a work environment. And when you feel that spark and energy back, you get back to who you are, you come around stronger after that. If you could provide a one last message for people who are viewing your video and want to get to know you better, you know, what would it be? I'd say my message would be to experience the journey of whatever you're doing and not just think about the end destination. So one of my favorite quotes, and actually it's a book called Chop Wood, Carry Water. What it signifies is that everyone is thinking about the end goal. They want, they want to win something, they want a title, they want a lot of money, they want best body in the world. But a lot of times you're not enjoying the whole process of it. You're not enjoying the actual workout. You're not enjoying the, the grunt work behind the scenes to get that successful job or title at work. And so one of the things I learned most is anything you do in life, you have to enjoy the process. 
and the results will come. And if not, you've learned a bunch and you had a, you had a good time. Mm -hmm. It's about the process and it's about what you learn throughout the whole journey. So thank you. Thank you for those inspiring words. Of course. Thanks, Susie. I appreciate your time for doing this. Awesome.